Hey everybody, welcome back to the Good Earth Podcast. This is Jake Martin again with Christians on Campus, and today I'm here with Danny. Hi everyone, it's good to be back again. We're so glad to have another episode of this podcast, and you know, a little something encouraging on this rainy day. Cold and rainy, it's never anybody's favorite, but thank the Lord we can still be encouraged in God's Word, don't have to fluctuate like the weather. We just, we have a constant God and he has constant word, and he has constant speaking. So we like to continue our series on God speaking. Last week, we covered God speaking through the written word of the Bible. Now we'd like to move on to a very related topic, God speaking as the Spirit. So one thing to remember as we cover this next portion of this study or this series is God's Word and God's Spirit cannot be separated, but they are distinct. So we just want to talk a little bit about that. What, what kind of distinguishes the Spirit from the Word, but how they can't be apart from each other? Yeah, that's, that's good, Jake, that you mentioned they, they're distinct, but they can't be separate, and we shouldn't separate them completely. And even as we, we touch this topic, again, we're continuing... Just going further, as believers, this is another way God speaks to us. He speaks to us through the Word. We have the written Word, and we mentioned even last week we have the Rima Word. But also with this, you have the Spirit. Because all of us as believers, when we believe in the Lord Jesus, we receive the Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit. We're begotten, born again of the Spirit, and the Spirit is with us. It's indwelling us, and it never leaves. We, we become a temple of the Holy Spirit. So we have the Word of God outside of us, but we have the Spirit within us. And so we have both, and this is another way that God speaks to us. Even when we see in the Bible, we can look at some verses that show just what you said, that these two should not be separated One is in John 6, 63. So Jesus is speaking, and he says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words which I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. And so Jesus is saying, The words that I have spoken to you are spirit. So they're they're not... These two are not, he's, he's connecting these, even what he's saying. He said, I'm not just speaking just words, just any words like you can find anywhere. The words that I'm speaking to you, within these words, there is the spirit. And there's also, there's life in these words. I guess you could kind of call the words that the Lord is speaking as like a container or a vehicle for him to impart himself into us. Because we, we know from 2 Corinthians 3 that the letter of the Bible could actually mm-hmm. kill us. Paul said, the law of the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So even when we read the Bible, if, if we care mm-hmm. only for the words themselves, we could just get dead letter that kills us. But the Lord also mm-hmm. said, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. So it's mm-hmm. through these words that he's imparting something of himself into uh, those who would receive this word and b- believe this word and, and enjoy him through this word. Mm. I mean, this is in the context, like you said, from John 6. So this is, he's talking about eating the bread which came down of he- come, came down out of heaven, not mm. eating a physical bread, but eating the Lord Jesus himself, not his physical flesh, but the words that he's speaking. They become food to us. They become nourishment to us, and they become our strength and our joy and our satisfaction when we can get this spirit out of the words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in that context, too, a lot, some of the ones there, they, they have trouble receiving this, because you, if you consider there was a lot of the scribes and the Pharisees and those that had God's word, even as you said, the physical word, but they never received anything of the spirit. They had it physically, but they never got the spirit that was there within God's word. It was there, and even 
the verse you mentioned in Second Corinthians, Paul was saying, "We God made us ministers of a new covenant," and then he says, "Ministers of the Spirit, not not of letter, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life." So he's saying. We're not just ministers giving you the letter. We're ministers giving you the spirit. But what are they giving you? They're giving you the God speaking. <laughs> they're giving you words. They're speaking to you. But in that speaking, in Paul's ministry, he's speaking, and there's words you're hearing, but you're receiving the spirit. And so it's called the ministry of the spirit. These two, they go together, and we need to see that With the word, there's the spirit. And we want, as you said, we want to get the spirit that's within the word. I love that example of Paul and the the others with him as they're ministering to the churches. What they're ministering is the spirit, but how do the believers receive the spirit through them? They receive the spirit through the words that they're speaking. So it's kind of interesting how sometimes we might speak words that don't impart life. And sometimes you speak words that impart life. And I don't know, maybe we could try to answer this question. What makes the difference? How can I have, you know, something from the Bible that I say, and it doesn't help someone. It doesn't minister the spirit to them. But another time I speak something of the word and it's very living. And the, that mm. person comes away enjoying more of who the Lord is. What makes the difference there? Yeah, that's a good question, because it's it's the same word of God. You know, it's it's written. It's it's the same one, but how can sometimes, like in this case, with Paul, he's saying there was ministers of the letter, and even at that time that became a problem. There was ones that came into the church ministering the letter and not the spirit, and that was causing problems in the church. How can we, as believers, minister? We want to minister the Spirit, which gives life, which helps people, rather than just the the letter of the Word. Well, the best way to do that is still is this the what we're talking about the Spirit is we need to be in Spirit when we are ministering, and so I could be sharing a verse from God's word with someone, but am I sharing that in spirit? Am I in spirit? Because the Bible tells us that we have a human spirit and that the Holy Spirit actually, we mentioned earlier, he comes to dwell in us. Well, where he comes to dwell, the Bible says, is our human spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes to be in our human spirit. And even it says in John 3 that we were, that which is born of spirit is spirit. So what was begotten when we were born again was our human spirit. And we were begotten of the Holy Spirit. So that verse, then there's the spirit himself witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God in Romans 8. So again, we have the Spirit, witnessing with our spirit. And then we have other verses. Do you have more you want to continue? Well, I think those those three that you brought out are really excellent because they, they very clearly show the relationship between the Holy Spirit and our human spirit. And I really like this. I guess if I were to add a verse, I would add 1 Corinthians 12, 3, that says, Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking in the Spirit of God mm-hmm. says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. So we have at least one phrase given to us Mm -hmm. in the New Testament that when you speak this, you can't Mm -hmm. speak it except in the Holy Spirit to say Mm -hmm. Jesus is Lord. And also you could definitely not be in your spirit and say that Jesus is accursed. So we have the Lord's name is one way that we can experience what you were just describing, Danny, just, you know, the spirit himself witnessing with our spirit that we are children of God, experiencing the spirit in our spirit, speaking the word of God in a living way. We can just call on the Lord's name. We can say, Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, 
we could be praying this in our heart, even as we're sharing with someone else. Lord Jesus, I want to minister life through this word. You just mm. little mm. simple prayers using the Lord's name, contacting the Lord, and mysteriously, there's something imparted through that prayer. As you're speaking, it's no longer just you yourself speaking a yeah. dead word that doesn't help, but the Lord is with you. The Lord is one spirit with you to to minister life into that person. Yeah, and that's good. Even even in the New Testament, we're, we're told at different times in Acts and even refer to other believers that they were in spirit when they did this or they said that. You know, it gives us that distinction. It's, they say something, but they're in spirit. So because obviously we have other cases where it's, they say something, they're not in spirit. So you had Peter at one time, clearly he, he was in spirit and had a revelation that Jesus was the son of the living God. And, and Jesus recognized that. But then a few verses later, you have him not be in spirit. And Jesus says, I need to go die. And Peter takes him aside and starts rebuking him. So his words there, he's not in spirit, but previously he was in spirit. And there's many things Peter says he's not in spirit. But then on Acts, he stands up and he's speaking in the Holy Spirit, standing with the 11 and 3,000 get saved. So you have, even with the believers, there was times when they started speaking in spirit and not in spirit. And the same, this this could be us. Like, But our, our desire, our goal is to be in spirit. And so when we are in spirit and we come to God's word ourselves, or when we speak God's word to others, we want to be in spirit so that what we're giving to others, it, it, even as these verses says, it imparts life. It's we're in spirit and we're handling God's word that, as you said, has this vehicle that has life in it. It has the spirit is in God's word. And so when we're in spirit and we're handling God's word, then the spirit in life can be Benefit, can benefit us, can supply us, can give us life, can give us light, could give us, even we talked about God's Remo word, but also that can be ministered and supply to other members when we're in spirit. Maybe we could just at this point reiterate a point that we've made earlier, be on the podcast, maybe just in the in-person Bible study, but just again, the spirit and the word not being able to be divided, meaning the Lord, we're all seeking the Lord speaking as the Spirit, but why we keep talking about the verses still here, it might seem like we're still kind of in the, the first topic, is because these two are so related. God will never speak something to you that is not in the Word or doesn't, like, it will never go contrary to what is written in His Word. This is His revelation. This is the unveiling of His heart. It opens up who God's person is. So as we're seeking the Lord speaking, and the, we may have a, a sense that God is speaking something, but if we check in the, the Bible and what we think is the Lord speaking doesn't fit, then we have mm-hmm. to reject that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's just a help for us. So just to as a reminder, as we keep getting more into verses that are still talking about the Word, you might be wondering why... Do these guys, I thought we moved on to a new topic. Why are we still talking about the Word? Well, that's because if, if we really want to experience the Spirit, we can't neglect the Word. Even Colossians 3.16 yeah. is, an, is another verse we could, we could talk about here that we need to let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly. And the, the verse goes on yeah. different ways that you can let that happen but the word of Christ wants to dwell in us. The word wants to make home in us. And we want to experience this word in a rich way. This is to experience the Lord speaking, where the Bible is no longer just you know, something that we know and can understand, but something that's rich. Mm-hmm. It's something that's supplying and even gives us a a sweet sense of the Lord's presence as we're mm-hmm. handling this with the Lord. And that's, and if you continue that verse, it's like you said, that we 
on, on our part, in verse 16, we were letting, we're letting the word of Christ dwell in us richly. But then in verse 17, in whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So on the one hand, we're letting, when we get God's word into us and we're letting that dwell in us richly, then there's some expression, there's some manifestation of that word dwelling in us in the things we do, the things we say in word or in deed, that we're doing that, even though it says, in the name of the Lord Jesus, or another way we could say, in the person, because that the name de- denotes his person. We're not just, hey, I'm doing this, and I, 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 ta- I put the little tag, in the name of Jesus. I'm cutting down this tree in the name of Jesus, or I'm lifting this in the name of Jesus. We're not just putting that as a tag on what we're doing or what we're saying, that we're doing it in his person. We're doing it one with him. We're doing it even in spirit, because the Holy Spirit, Christ, dwells in us. And so we can do things in spirit. We can, we just, we're talking about, we can read God's word in spirit. We can speak God's word to others in spirit, but we can drive our car in spirit. We can do everything in spirit. And our words, in word or in deed, my words, the things I say, my attitude, how I am with my wife or with friends or with strangers can be in spirit. Maybe as now we're talking about being in spirit throughout our daily life, one verse that came out in the in-person Bible study that I really appreciated was Romans 8, 6, that the mindset on the spirit is life and peace, but the mindset on the flesh is death. So I think this verse is really helpful as we're talking about going through life, being in spirit, maybe you're driving your car. How do we know that we're in spirit? How do we know that the Lord has a way to speak to us, even in such a mundane kind of daily task? Well, we have a sense in our spirit of life and peace when we're in the Lord's presence and the word Mm. of Christ Mm. is operating and dwelling. But we also have a sense of death that tells us we don't have the word Mm. of Christ dwelling in us richly. We kind of left the Lord's presence I think this is a really helpful experience to to kind of pay attention to and and develop a taste for mm-hmm. just to to check with the Lord. Lord Jesus, as I'm going through this part of my life, how's my spirit? Am I enjoying life and mm-hmm. peace right now? Do mm-hmm. I feel like I'm in your presence or do I feel like I'm I'm feeling a little dead? I'm a little dry. I don't have that much heart to pray. I don't have that much care or concern for anybody around me. It's just kind of a a whole different experience. Yeah, and that actually, this is really good too when we consider as believers who are really seeking the Lord's will, and you say the Lord's leading in our life and many different decisions that come up. Things come up and we may, instead of just picking a direction and going in that, as believer, we may realize and we may have the heart, Lord, I really want, you in this decision, and I don't want to do this decision. I don't want to make this decision apart from you. And so let's say we, you know, it's very normal as believers, we pray about it. We start seeking the Lord. Lord, what, what's your feeling? What's your will in this matter? Should I go to this school? Should I go to that school? Should I take this job? Should I take that job? Lord, should I marry this person? I mean, big things or even small things is that we start bringing things to the Lord, but then it's, well, I don't know. How how do I know the Lord's speaking or the Lord's feeling? How do I, you know, what could we say God's like, we're, we're looking for God speaking. Or, and we talked about even previously in our podcast, like, nor you know most believers don't have the experience where the sky parts or we hear an audible voice go this direction do this don't do that not that a believer can't have this experience but this is not too common but what is normal for a believer is what you just said that we could really be bringing a matter to the lord and then we could have peace we could have a sense 
of peace, the more we pray about it, the more we fellowship about and we're really seeking the Lord's will, we may just have a lot of peace concerning one way and not so much peace concerning the other, the more we pray. Or we might pray a lot and might not have much feeling, but then we start moving in a direction. We start going in a certain direction. Okay, Lord, I prayed about this. I'm not, I'm still not really clear. I'm going to start going in this direction. But as we're going in that direction, we're still very much before the Lord, still looking to the Lord. And that can, and that gives us a sense within one way or the other. Maybe we're going in the direction and this is the way God is leading us. And so there's lots of peace. The more we go in that direction, there's still peace there. But maybe we start going in a direction and we just start losing all peace, all peace within. And maybe that's not the way the Lord is leading us because as the further we go and the more we pray, continue to pray about it, we lose peace. I like this, this topic. I mean, it, it's just so practical in, in our life because there's so many areas that you mentioned marriage, you mentioned maybe a career, like different big life decisions you need to make. And if we really are serious and we want the Lord's leading, we're praying, it might seem like the Lord is never answering us. Well, the Lord doesn't ignore us when we pray. Like when we ask mm-hmm. for the Lord's leading, absolutely he wants to give us an answer. But what way is he going to give us an answer? It's not going to be like a fortune cookie, you know, which sometimes we want. Sometimes we want it to be that clear. I can just read the little slip and it says, go here and do this. And we do it. God kind of becomes like a genie that we rub the bottle and he comes out and tells us which direction to go. And we go, but the Lord, he speaks mainly, um, he's not going to speak something apart from his word. So that's established. So as long as we're in the word, that helps. That helps us discern this sense. But then also we have in our spirit a registration, whether or not we're, we're living, whether we feel peaceful, we're at rest, we feel encouraged, we feel like the Lord is smiling. These two components of our relationship with the Lord just kind of save us from waiting for a billboard in the sky that says, go here, do this, marry this person. And more Mm -hmm. helps us just to spend some time quietly before the Lord, soft, open, considering his word, asking for his spirit to speak through our spirit. And then you just might have a a little inclination to go one way or the other. And then the whole time you're just checking, Lord, are you still going this way? Are Are you not? Do you want to go somewhere else? And he can, in every fine little detail of our life, just direct our steps mm-hmm. that way. Yeah, and that's, it's good, Jake, even with this realization. I know this, it's been, this realization has been growing as I continue as a Christian, but I didn't really have a very solid realization or understanding of this matter of the Spirit even indwelling me and how much he was there in every aspect of my life. That I'm a believer and I, when I believed, I received the Lord, I received the Holy Spirit. And so the Spirit is with me in everything. It's not just that sometimes it comes upon me and then leaves and then God wants to speak to me and he comes upon me again. No, he's, he's in me. And he's indwelling me. He's indwelling me all the time. And he has feelings. He has many thoughts about things. But a lot of times I can just go through my day, even as a believer, and almost dismiss or not not even register his feelings within me, his feelings with, within my spirit. He might not be happy about something, Or he might be trying to get my attention because I'm about to do something or go in a direction. He doesn't want me to go, but I'm just oblivious because I don't have much realization. The Lord is in me. The Holy Spirit is in me all the time. And I haven't built up even this habit of fellowshipping with him and really developing a relationship with him and opening to him. Because the more we do this, the more we build this kind of we, we have this realization and we start building, we start bringing the Lord into different, more and more matters of our life. The Lord has a way that even his, his feeling, his speaking, his leadings 
we have a better registration of that within us and that he's there and we start bringing him into more things and he starts giving us these fe- even wow there's a lot of peace here in this or wow i don't have i don't have a lot of peace i i feel discomfort the more i i do this but I, i'm bringing the lord into it that this kind of feeling and this kind of of leading becomes more clear as we go on as believers when we have this realization Christ is in us. The Holy Spirit is within us all the time. And we start building more and more our relationship with him, bringing him into more things, bringing more matters up to him in prayer and really seeking his leading and his will in every matter. That's so good, Danny. I think maybe as we're going to wrap up this episode, we could end on this verse Colossians one twenty seven. There's many verses that bring out this matter of Christ living within us, but just to leave all you guys listening with just one of them, uh, it says, To whom God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Today we have a hope. We have a hope of glory, and that is because we have the glorious Christ living within us in our spirit, and he never leaves us. He said in Matthew, I'm with you all the days until the consummation of the age. That means today. Every day is a new today to open to the Lord who is within us, who is our hope, and we just speak with him, we spend time with him in his word, and, and we listen for that sense of life and peace within and who knows how many different things in, in your life the Lord may want to speak to you in. And we're just developing this sensitivity to what the Lord might want to share with us. So praise the Lord we have this kind of a relationship with God that he, he can speak to us. And we can maybe not hear audible words, but we can follow his presence all the time. So if you like what you heard and would like to hear more, please like, share, subscribe to, and review this podcast. Thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you for the next episode.